accelerate your productivity, and reclaim your hard-earned free time. Let's work smarter, not harder, to impress our friends, colleagues, and most importantly, to impress yourself. Today, we're gonna to be talking about 10 Photoshop tips, tricks, and hacks for architecture students. My name's Christopher, and here at All Arc, we offer an alternative perspective on all things architecture and design. Check out this video I made up here, also linked in the description below, to another architecture program, Tips, Tricks, and Hacks. Also, if you hang out until the end, I'll throw in a little bonus tip that saved me a whole bunch of time. All right, let's jump right in. First, you're gonna to wanna to use your selection tool and outline your object. Now right click it and choose save selection. Name it something you can remember and click okay. Now let's say later on you need to edit that selection again. Go over to your channels tab, hold control and click on the selection you saved earlier. And as you can see, it's selected again for you. And now you can edit it. This is a little tip that's been a running joke in architecture for a long time. If your image needs a little more flair, or you'd like to add a nice little finishing touch, you can add a grunge overlay, watercolor, bokeh, lens flare, grid texture, canvas texture, and so much more. It's also a nice way to help all the elements within your collage blend together a little bit more. If you thought those tips were good, wait until you see these. Okay, did you know that you could select a color from outside of Photoshop? Go to your eyedropper tool, Shrink your Photoshop window. Click inside your Photoshop image. And then select what color you want from an image outside of Photoshop. This tip will speed up your architecture drawing workflow times 10, like guaranteed. When you are rendering out an image, you have probably seen something called a material ID. This is simply your render, but instead of rendering the complicated materials and lighting, it only renders each material as one specific color. After you're done rendering, go ahead and drop in your material ID. And as you can see, it's the same dimension as the rendered image, so you can just make it snap into place. Now go over to your magic wand tool, deselect contiguous. Now select what material you want to edit. For me, I think this brick needs to be lightened up a little bit, so I'm going to go over to my material ID layer and select the brick. As you can see, it's all one color. Now I'm gonna select my render image again, and I'm gonna brighten it up some. You can actually combine this tip with the save selection tip. There you go. New architecture content is being added to this channel daily. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to invest in yourself. You'll be the first to know about all the new tips, tricks, and hacks as they roll out in the future. All right, let's get back to the video. More often than not, a rendering program just can't get the material just right. Sometimes what I'll do is render it out as white, find the material I want to use online, then I place it in Photoshop. Hold Control and press T. Now right click it, and go to Distort. When you move these selection boxes, you can change the perspective of your material to match that of your image. When you're done, press Enter, and then change your blending modes a little bit. And there you go. This one tip has saved me countless hours of work. Tell me how many times have you clicked the eraser tool or the brush tool just one too many times and you can't undo anymore? You can actually increase how many undos you have. Go up to Edit, Preferences, Performance. Go over to History States and increase it. Just remember, if you choose a very high number, it could slow down your Photoshop. I like to keep mine around 300. We're down to our last three tips and then on to your bonus tip. As you can see here, these flamingos are way out of scale. And if you want to find them in your layers tab, sometimes it just takes forever. An easy way to find them is to right click them within the image and it narrows it down to whatever you clicked on. There it is, flamingos. Now I can edit them. On the other hand, if you know where it is in the layers panel, but you can't find them in the image, hold alt and click the thumbnail and it'll zoom into that layer. Did you know that you can find materials from online, turn them into a pattern, and then apply them to your renders? So first off, I'm gonna save this brick pattern. I'm gonna open up the brick in Photoshop, go to Edit, 
define pattern and name it brick. Click OK. Now go to your render, create a new layer, use your marquee tool to draw a box the size of your liking. Go up to edit, fill, under content, select pattern. Under custom pattern, select your brick. Then click script and do brick fill. Click OK. And here you can edit your scale and spacing. I'm gonna drop mine to about 25% and click OK. And Photoshop just automatically created a brick wall pattern for you. And last but not least is tip number 10. And right after is your bonus tip. A quick and easy way to make your building pop in a render is to make it look like it's glowing. To do this, go over to your brush tool, choose white, make sure your brush is a good size, create a new layer just above your render, and name it glow. Now draw an outline around your building. It's okay if it's a little messy. Now go to your glow layer, now change its blending mode to overlay, and drop the opacity down to a number that you're comfortable with. Now for your bonus tip. This is probably the best tip I can show you. Everyone learns differently and I wanted to make this just in case it's your style. I put a link to my free cheat sheet that includes all 10 of these tips, tricks, and hacks. It's a pretty useful interactive document I designed and it's worth a look. I like to print it out or save it to my computer so I can refer to it easily. If you like the video, please like the video and consider subscribing down below. If you learned anything in this video, check out that playlist down there. It's a playlist of a whole bunch of architecture programs that I did tips, tricks, and hacks for. And right here is a link to my Patreon page. Patreon is where creative makers and thinkers like yourself can support someone like me. You get a whole bunch of cool benefits and plus your name gets featured in my videos just like that. Regardless though, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.